no, that's great. More. There's always more. <laughs> There's always more. <laughs> but always practice. More. And you have to get your students to practice that accuracy. It's not going to just come from one little, you know, ride in the dressage court. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, we have to move on to our second topic. Uh, so we're going to be moving on to some teaching techniques. And I'd like to welcome... Uh -oh. Yes? Just keep yes. talking. We can hear you. We can't see you. Oh, I can see her. That's fine. I okay. can see her. Oh, you can? Oh. Excellent. So we welcome, I'd like to welcome everybody to the dressage instructors webinar we have with us this evening. A couple of very, very lovely dressage people with us. Brandy Thompson. Randy Thompson is the founder of the Horse and Rider Awareness Education Programs, and Randy coaches professionals in the horse world and has recently produced USDF regional and national winners through to the intermediate level. Her website is horseandriderawareness.com. And we also have us with Eden, also have us, have with us, get my words mixed, Jody Lees. Jody is a USEF large R dressage judge and upgrading to large S in 2017. She has earned her USDF bronze, silver, and gold medals, and her website is jodyleesdressage.com. And I'm Laura Kellen May. I'm a USEF large R equitation judge and senior equestrian Canada judge and steward. Okay, so we are going on to teaching techniques, and we're going to narrow down this to the our tips on the movements where the horse is required to stretch and follow the bit. So, Jody, what is the judge looking for in the stretchy gates required in the dressage test? Well, it's interesting because the stretch circle has changed. I think we all probably remember and maybe still get rewarded for kind of if that horse's nose touches the ground, we're going to get a nine, you know, so it's get the horse's nose to the ground and get them to stretch as much as they can that way. But there is a, a newish, a newer um, definition in the rule book for the stretching on a long rein. And I just want you to bear with me and listen carefully to this definition. It's a little bit long, but it's, it's pretty enlightening. Stretching on a long rein. This exercise gives a clear impression of the throughness of the horse and proves its balance, obedience, and relaxation. In order to execute the exercise stretching on a long rein correctly, the rider allows the horse to take the reins gradually and smoothly as he stretches his neck forward and downward. As the neck stretches forwards and downwards, the mouth should reach more or less to the horizontal line corresponding with the point of the shoulder. An elastic and consistent contact with the rider's hands must be maintained. The gait must maintain its rhythm and the horse should remain light in the shoulders with the hind legs well engaged. So if you were kind of listening carefully to that, you heard throughness, which at train, we're seeing stretch circles at training versus that means we're already wanting to see that the horse has got proper training and that they're working in throughness. That's not just for the upper higher levels. It also said maintain balance. Shoulders need to be free and light. It said that the nose didn't, I mean, the mouth did not need to go below the horizontal line of the shoulder. So there are a lot of things in here that I hope some of you are like wide-eyed about because it, it's opposed to what you've been thinking that stretch circle is all about. It's going to take well, it's the been, judges. I agree. It's this been is updated. Like, yeah, instead of throwing the reins away, letting the horses run around on their forehand, the rider loses control of the horse, the, the horse is turning upside down or taking over. Um, what we're asking is we want to see that that horse, that control is maintained and that what we're teaching the horse is that they stretch to and towards the bit. They're seeking the contact. They're not, we're not throwing them away from that contact. So it's a, it's, you know, it's, it's important to really start to teach your students this because that concept you're going to use in your Grand Prix test, you know, when you ask that horse to have a little more stretch over their top line. Um, well, let's talk about what the instructor sees because we're talking about it as instructors and trainers. Yeah. 
So visually as an instructor, one of the things that I notice when a horse is doing their stretchy circle, our stretchy gait, whichever mm -hmm. one it is, is that their mm -hmm. shoulders should be, even with the rear end, are a little bit higher. Absolutely. That's a sign that you can see, if you imagine a, a light on the front of a horse's chest, right where their center of their chest is, that should be pointing either forward or up. You'll see a lot of the people who are doing the old style of stretch, they start doing it, their horses go on the long way, and all of a sudden their shoulders are, the front of their chest is pointing down. Other ways you can see it are, it's pretty easy. You can see you've heard the V between the horse's legs. When a horse is moving correctly, we're talking trot here, you'll see that the legs move in the same rhythm and they have the same V. Now another thing that I've learned, let's see if I can find it here, is this magical device. And this was actually at a USDF instructors program. They used to do the 13 and 14 day ones and stuff. And anyway, so Lengren was using one of these and this is how it works. This is a handheld metronome. Hear the beep? Oh, let me see if I can get it to beep more. It's a little slow. Maybe my cats are playing with it. I'm going to turn the volume up. So the nice thing about these metronomes is that you can set it to your horse's rhythm. And the way that I do it is I watch them, for example, at their slow trot, when they're springing and they're swinging through their hips and shoulders. And that's the right gait to put a metronome on. Now these metronomes, see it leaking? It, you can hear it from a long ways away as an instructor. All you have to do is a clip on, is you clip it on your student, wherever you want, and you'll be able to hear the beat. So do they, but what it does is it does something that I've never seen happen before because again, we have people who are trying to learn rhythm and ride a circle or whatever and it's really hard. So we've all been taught the Monday, Tuesday, one, two, you know, that type of thing. But with a metronome, nobody can lie because the metronome rhythm doesn't change. And as we know in dressage, you're supposed to be able to have an in the same rhythm, whatever gait you're within. Like if it's a trot, the extended, the lengthening, the collected, they're all supposed to be the same rhythm. And this will keep you honest. You will be shocked. I get these on eBay for like $8. Do you have that link anymore, Laura? Or we'll, I'll just share it on the Facebook page. Yeah, share it on the Facebook page. Well, I could go back okay, to These are like $8. So, but Randy, learning as an instructor, learning how to use it, because like I'm not very technical, so, and I haven't used a, a metronome. I hear people do it all the time, but I, you know, how easy is it to really find the correct rhythm that you're looking to, you know, use it? Because I get a little shy of technical things like that. We yeah. all do. Welcome to the yeah. world. I know, we all do. So when I first got into this, I was intimidated too because it's like math. It's like one, two, you know, that type of thing. So there is a little oh, learning curve. <laughs> oh, I that's see the, you know, that's the extent of your curve. math, is it, Randy? Yeah. Yeah. So, is that the extent of your math? One, two? <laughs> I know, I know, I feel that way. But it was, a, it was a little learning experience, but once I started doing it, I've used this on every breed of horse that's out there, not just dressage horses, because anybody that's competing, the right rhythm, hunters, all of those, Western, any event, rhythm makes the horse look more elegant for the judge. That's the bottom line. So I have practiced this. I've taught it to a lot of people, and maybe that's something we can go into more. Jody, I might have to send you mine just so you have one. Absolutely, because like like I said, maybe playing with it, then you start to learn how to use it. Because I mean, to me, that would but be it's amazing key. the difference. It's amazing the difference it'll make in your riders because we can see that springy gait that we yes. like. Most people yes. can't get it because they've got the horse trotting fast. Too fast. Absolutely fast. So it might it might be tracking up, but it's lost that spring. Yeah. What's the German word they try to teach us? It doesn't lost the loss. Lost the loss. That swing. I still can't say it. <laughs> that swing. Lost so lost this, lost lost and hype. Those are an Uber strike. That's the extent of my German. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember when they tried to make us all learn those words? That is yeah. meters. They were trying to get us yeah. to go to meters and then do all the German words. Well, obviously yeah. we failed. Yes. Um, too, yes. I think too, uh, Randy and Jody, if you use a metronome, it takes uh, takes out the the guesswork for the rider too. They don't have to say, well, is my horse speeding up? Is it slowing down? Well, no, it's not in, yeah. in line with that rhythm anymore. So it takes that away. Plus, I think the horse can hear it and it also gets the horse. Yeah. That also helps. It's amazing the transformation it makes. What I 
what I can do is I'll share one of the videos of somebody that I was working on 10 meter circles on in the trot. Yeah. And I'll put that on the dressage sure. instructor's page. So you can actually see me take a rider through the process of using a metronome on a 10 Great meter. idea. Great idea. But I think that's a super tool. And like, again, again, that's what we're trying to do is kind of break out on and start to, to use some other tools and expose ourselves to some other ways that we might, you know, really uh, make a, a difference for our riders. Um, yeah. So I think that's a great. And again, practice, 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 because that stretchy right. trot, so you you're not, you're not, you have to do that by degrees. That stretchy trot, you have to teach your horse how to do it properly. And it's by degrees. It's not by throwing the reins away and letting the horse be on their own. And the same with the rider. They have to feel that that horse wants to seek that connection that connection so, so, so again it's all about practice okay jody yes, yes. and making it fun for the rider yeah. steph uh steph i want to read something stephanie gibson said i agree with jody the students must practice 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 getting them to do that well i mean that's a whole stephanie you're correct that's a whole nother subject and that how do we empower our riders how do we motivate our riders certainly on our list of things to start working on. And like I said, we're going to just build these webinars and hopefully if people keep coming every time, we can start filling in those pieces and building that, um, you know, that information. But you're exactly right. You motivate, how to motivate them is something that we all need to work on. But I think that education motivates them. So I think when they start to get more information and they start to empower themselves a little bit with that information then they want more um so i don't know how y'all feel about that but i agree or maybe it's just some of us because some horse people are really hyper, able to hyper focus and i really it took me a long time to realize that everybody in the world doesn't do that yeah but because we it's such a strong passion with us we love it so much that it's easy for us to dive into it so deep yeah. we just assume everybody right. else does Okay, yeah. before we get but Karen I, down that wormhole again, let's, uh, we got to keep a track of the time here. But before we carry on, I want to ask everybody who's listening in here. Oh, Stephanie also just said something else here. I, I harp on students about practicing stretchy trots and free walk because of the coefficient being times two. It throws yes, away points absolutely. if you do a crappy free walk or a stretchy circle. So exactly right. Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about. How do you improve your dressage scores? How do you motivate your students? So you're right. They need to know that they threw away, you know, two oh, points, not one, or four yeah. points, not two, or six points, not three. I mean, they need to know that. And just bringing that to their attention and then trying to, trying to help them find a way to get it better. I think I, I have to say this. I do have to say it. Some judges aren't going to want, but we are in a process of changing how this stretchy circle is being judged. So there's going to be some inconsistency in the judging on that uh, that stretchy circle um, for a while, and I, I, until everyone gets on the same page because to judging in a different way. Um, so there's going to be a little frustration. What? Can we talk a little bit about the extended walk where they need to stretch into the rain? Because a lot of people I see, they're learning how to do the extended walk and they're just throwing the reins away. The same thing as we've been seeing for years in the stretchy trot. They throw the reins away and they lose the connection, which, you know, it's a difference between a six and an eight at least. Right. right? Well, your free so, walk and your extended walks are different things. So the free walk we see um, through second level and then the extended walk we see from third level onwards. So in the free walk, what they're trying to teach the students is not to get, not to damage the horse's walk, but to actually feel and allow that horse to walk freely and actually learn what the feel is of them walking over their back. And uh, we often talk about the free walk as judges that it should look like a leopard strolling across the safari, that really swinging, long, relaxed, you know, suppleness of the spine. And again, that we, you know, we do as judges, we want to see two, we kind of split that into two scores, 50% what happens over the top line and dead about the over track, um, what happens from the hind legs and the over track of the hoof prints. So if that horse isn't over tracking, they're not really coming through and reaching over their back. 
And if they're not stretching, they're not really reaching over their back. So it's kind of a 50-50 score there. Um, and the reins, as far as the free walk is concerned, can be a little looser and a, and a little longer. And we definitely don't have a problem with the horse's pole and head going a, a lower because we want to encourage that leopard-like walk. The extended well, walk, say, their back is up. It does what? say, as long as they're back. Go ahead, Randy. Say, if you don't want to lose control, we don't want to see people throwing away the control and then their horse is gone um, or springs are, you know, it's still about teaching the horse how to follow that bit and how to be, they're not, they're not, in a free walk, a horse is still partnering with you. They're still on their job. Their job didn't end because they're in a free walk. Free walk is part of their job, part of the connection, part of the partnership. So it's not, oh, now we don't have to be, you know, listening to our riders. And then at the end of it, suddenly they have to be listening to the rider again. And then so the extended the walk is says, that we don't want to, what? So one of my uh, instructor, somebody mentioned to me is that when you're on a free walk, it's a free walk, it usually says free walk and a loose rein, but it's your free walk, it isn't a holiday. It's not a break in your dressage test. It is a movement that is to show the judge something. It's not a, a holiday. It's it's not a break in the test. It's a movement. Yes. So you have to keep that in your mind as well when you're riding it. Yes. Excellent. You're exactly right. It it is a movement that shows that that horse is willing to follow that bit and willing to have the reins taken back up again. The okay, extended so walk, we still want to see maximum over track, and we still want to see maximum stretch, and we really don't want to see that nose and mouth go too much below the shoulder. So we're not looking for the downward stretch. We're looking for the outward stretch, and then the ability, the longitudinal suppleness, and then the ability to collect that back again. So that's what we're looking for in the, in the extended walk. Did we lose okay, so, uh, Yeah, so Judy, I just wanted to say that uh, Fran, I think it's Fran, Fran had a comment for you. She said that Janet Boy refers to sloppy geometry as sloppy lost points. Absolutely. <laughs> Janet's great point. Heroes, I think she's just an amazing instructor and she has a lot of great phrases and actually I recommend both of her books because they're very easy to read for instructors especially um, and they, they hit on a lot of different topics but you're exactly right Fran it's just lost points you know when you have sloppy geometries. Sloppy so. lost points. So before yeah. we uh, head on well thank you very much Jody and Randy for that but before we head on we ha do have to move on here uh, there are if you look at the bottom underneath where uh, the three of us are chatting here there's something called polls and if you click on polls there are a couple some questions there that I'd like for you to go and answer uh, do you see stretchy movements performed correctly you can vote yes I see them accurately or no I don't see them I see lots of mistakes and are you writing accurate tests you can say yes I write accurate tests and that refers to the geometry no I need help with my accuracy and sometimes so if you would take a little bit of time to sign in there and, and do those polls, that would be just some fun. And if you're having any uh, comments, we'd love to hear some comments from you or questions from you. And also to remind you to go to the Dressage Instructors Facebook page so that you can get uh, more information. There's lots of articles posted there. You can ask questions and we're there to help you if you have some questions or if you have other tips you'd like to share. We hope that you develop a community there for everybody to go there and post some things. And also if you're sharing on Twitter, use the hashtag Dressage Instructors. Okay, so Randy and Jody, are you ready to move on to the Horse Business 101? Let's rock and roll. Yeah, we're chewing up the time here. It's 